Ministers are considering a plan to connect Heathrow and Gatwick airports via a new high-speed rail link to create the world's first virtual hub. Sorry, what did you say? Um, ministers are considering a plan to link Heathrow and Gatwick airport to create this mega airport. You know this is a live set, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, I heard you the first time. I was just making sure these guys heard you correctly. This is a joke, right? Well, no, I only get paid to read what's here. Of course, sorry, um, carry on. Thanks. So this new scheme, which is being dubbed Heathwick, will create a high-speed railing between Heathrow and Gatwick airports, linking the airports together within 15 minutes of each other, allowing for connections to be made possible. Right, cut, cut. Th this is outrageous. This seriously can't be happening. Also, who's got my coffee? Right, I'm going to find out the real story behind Heathwick. Right. Hi all and welcome back to a, another video. Uh, I thought I'd try something a little bit different in the intro, so um, let me know what you guys think. But we're here today to talk about Heathwick, which I'm sure as you heard is a new high-speed rail link and a new radical plan costing five billion pounds to link Heathrow and Gatwick airports together, creating this one airport hub. Um, and yes, this is being considered seriously, or was, shall I say. So this video is split up into two sides. Basically, we've got the airport side and the railway side. So um, I'll put a link in the description and have those timestamps depending on which bits you want to see. So the idea was basically put forward as an alternative to the political debate that always happens regarding Heathrow Airport's expansion of its third runway and having a new airport in the southeast of England. So it all started in the 1990s and was basically brought up again by the British Chambers of Commerce in 2009. And then in 2011, two years later, the government was actually considering it as an option. And with all the politics behind it and the media, this is where the Heathwick term came about. So it would be a 35 mile high speed rail route, which would link trains between Gatwick and Heathrow Airport, traveling at up to 180 miles an hour, parallel to the M25. What was interesting about this idea was that passengers and crew members didn't even need to go through customs or immigration. They would literally get off the plane, go to like this train station, get on a high speed train to Heathrow or Gatwick, and then go to their next gate. Um, so all the transfers were done in the secure side of the airport. But how would this work? Well, Gatwick Airport would assume the role of the shorter medium haul feeder flights. So this was largely regional flights from Edinburgh or Glasgow, for example, as well as European ones from continental Europe, and maybe even a little bit further afield. Heathrow would deal with all the long haul flights though. So to the States, Australia, Asia, you name it, the long haul ones are from there. It was hoped that this would streamline the immigration and check-in process and essentially enable passengers arriving at one airport to depart on a connecting flight from a complete different airport and the whole process would be completed within 75 minutes was the time frame given. And that's comparable to, you know, Dubai or Heathrow today by the time you go through immigration, security, etc, etc. So this would allow more flights to get into Gatwick, which was the idea behind getting all these regional flights in. And with having this interconnected link, they could theoretically call Heathrow a full runway airport because of the two at Heathrow existing and the one new and one existing at Gatwick, having this four runway hub competing with many of the other European airports today in a very roundabout way, of course. So the high-speed Heathwick line was basically used as a way to increase runway costs, um, landing costs, you know, all these extra fees. And essentially this would outprice low-cost airlines. So, you know, EasyJet and Ryanair largely, Wizz Air even. And the idea was to push them out of the Gatwick airport into the other low-cost hubs, which are Luton, Stansted and Southend which ended up happening largely anyway, for Ryanair at least. Um, but would this have worked? Well, compared to other places, um, I have no idea, because I don't think this idea has ever been implemented anywhere else. Yes, you can get these small shuttle service trains um, between terminals like you have in JFK, uh, but 
going between airports, I still believe you need to get out past customs and security uh, and then, you know, recheck in. So I don't really know how this would work. Theoretically, yes, it could work, but it would be a very expensive high speed rail link needed. And just a transfer between terminals seems a bit cost inefficient, let's say. But what other options do we have? Well, the first one is to basically, you know, go ahead with this interesting rail link. Two is to build a new runway somewhere else, whether that be Heathrow, Gatwick, um, or, you know, elsewhere, Stansted. Uh, option three was the Thames Estuary Airport, which is a uh, good old Boris's airport, um, which I hope has been killed off, but we'll see. And option four is to do nothing, which is basically what we've been doing for the last 10 years. Um, not essentially a bad thing, but, uh, you know, with this debate about a new hub, it's always a bit controversial, let's say. But anyway, that's enough about the airport side. Let's move on to the rail side. So from what I understand, this link would not only connect Gatwick and Heathrow Airport, it would also be extended round the M25, linking up to Luton Airport. But this might not go ahead anymore since Thames Link already exists between Luton Parkway and Gatwick Airport. So things got quite quiet and there was a lot of opposition as you can imagine, not just from everyday locals and councillors. I'm pretty sure every airline didn't agree with this, as well as BAA, who are the operators of Heathrow Airport. And I think the scheme slowly fell out of actually being proposed and kind of put on the back burner. Things resurfaced with a similar proposal called uh, HS4 Air, which I imagine is like high speed for air. Um, and this was put forward by a British engineering consultancy called Expedition Engineering. Um, so this proposal was slightly different. It would connect HS1, which currently runs from St. Pancras down to continental Europe, as well as HS2, which runs from Euston up to Birmingham. The link would run along the Tonbridge to Ashford line, where it would then head to Gatwick Airport. It would then make a curve heading towards Heathrow, connecting to the Great Western Main Line and then onto the HS2 link at a total cost of £10 billion, with 40% of the route using existing tracks, as well as upgrades to Ashford and Tombridge stations. This scheme was also rejected by the government in 2018 due to the fact that the Department for Transport did not consider the proposal to be financially credible, um, and without the government's support, it was hard for anything to get pushed through. So um, this, along with all the public opposition with it being built on Greenbelt land, um, basically meant this project was also cancelled. <laughs> so what other mad airport ideas did we have? Well, the final sort of airport link was actually the Windsor Link Railway. Um, and this uh, you might have heard of before. And again, it's an interesting proposal. So the route essentially would connect the Great Western Main Line um, and head west towards Windsor before a 300 meter tunnel connection was made to join the southwestern line, which would be phase one. Phase two would then link up to Heathrow Airport, where it would again connect to cross rail lines, allowing links back to Paddington. And there was also a phase 2A, let's say, that would be a additional junction at Staines that would head down the M3 corridor to Southampton. Just so you know, this is different from the Reading Western link, as well as the Southern Access link to Heathrow, which are two separate videos I've also made. So I put them on the map just to show where they are, but also go check them out if you're interested. So as I was saying, this was completely privately invested and financed and was estimated to cost about 200 million pound, which for a 300 meter bit of track seems a little pricey, but uh, the project was essentially canceled by the government and because it was privately funded, I think they did get the permission by Network Rail. They just never filed any planning permissions. Going back to Heathwick, along with all these other proposals, I do think it was visionary at the time. However, it's now 2020, we're in the midst of a pandemic, um, priorities have completely changed. And I think that's all these proposals will ever be. A very interesting idea that is good to dig into and see what could have been. But uh, anyway, I hope you guys found this interesting. Um, in the meantime, don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment down below, and um, I guess I'll see you next time. Keep safe, guys, and I'll see you later.